Good morning, everybody. Eight days after the resurrected Jesus encountered the rest of the apostles, Jesus encountered Thomas. And because of that encounter, St. Thomas has been better known as the, as the doubting apostle rather than what should be a more popular title, the Apostle of India. When Vasco da Gama, the famous explorer, reached India in 1948, sorry, I got that very wrong, 1498, the Portuguese were surprised to find Christian communities thriving in the southern part of the subcontinent. They were even more surprised that the locals were insistent that they were founded by the apostle St. Thomas. Of course, historically, a lot of the information we have now about Thomas's presence is uh, considered to be sometimes skeptical by the historians, but there's one reality that, that everybody is unable to resist, and the reality is the presence of a living community even today. Christians in the southern state of Kerala in India, many of them call themselves the St. Thomas Christians, and I am one of them. There is no doubt that there is an unbroken tradition going back to St. Thomas in India from 52 AD. This is before Paul and Peter were beheaded. Now on this feast day, we read the gospel story of Thomas's, what I'm calling first non-encounter and then the encounter with Jesus. He was not at Jesus' first appearance to the apostles. And Thomas' insistence on seeing the Lord, seeing the nail marks, putting his hands into the nail marks, and putting his hands into his side, are now all talked about as Thomas' inability to believe. That's how we interpret that passage. Yes, it's all well and good until we realize that that guy is me. Thomas stands for all those folks who do not not necessarily believe, but whose faith is a journey more than an event. I'm one of those people for whom my faith has been a journey, even though I was baptized when I was a child. And Thomas represents all those people for whom faith is a journey. And we can ident identify three phases to Thomas's faith journey. The first is what I'm calling the, faith, the phase of unfaith, not non-faith, but Thomas could not believe because Thomas was never there when people came and announced about the resurrection, or for example, when Jesus himself appeared. He simply was not there. Sometimes we compare Thomas to the other apostles who believed. Well, they be believed because they were there when Jesus appeared. So we compare apples and oranges when it comes to Thomas and the rest of the apostles. Thomas was not there on that on that day that Jesus appeared. But he was not the only one who did not believe. Mary Magdalene sat outside the tomb weeping. Peter and John had to peek into the tomb to see if what Mary was telling them was true. The body was not there. 
the disciples on the road to Emmaus were downcast. But it's not just them, it's all of us too. We have all been there. And Thomas represents all of us. When the disciples told Thomas about Jesus' appearance to them, his response marks the second phase of his faith journey. He asks that certain criteria be met before he believes. Unless, unless, that's his criterion, unless. He does not say he will not believe. He offers his willingness to believe if his faith conditions are met. He wants to see and touch. Those of you who are comfortable with online shopping, I'll give an example of what that means. Many people are able to get outfits and, and gadgets and on, uh, online, and I can't do it. I need to touch stuff before I buy it. Many people are into um, grocery shopping online now. I want to touch the fish that I buy or the meat. I want to see the meat that I buy, right? Thomas is my kind of guy. He simply wants to touch and see. He does not refuse the possibility of the resurrection, but he simply wants to know. Nothing wrong with that. So eight days later, Jesus appears to the disciples again, and this time Thomas is there, and this is the third phase of his faith. Surprisingly, Jesus meets his conditions. Come on, Thomas, touch, feel, see. And Jesus says to him, do not be faithless, but believe. Yes, your conditions have been met, your criteria. Listen, Jesus meets us where we are. How often we think of God as somebody who's so demanding that's impossible to satisfy this God. But God is different. Jesus meets us where we are in our faith journey. John does not tell us in today's gospel reading whether Thomas actually put his finger in Jesus' wounds. All we know is Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Folks, Jesus is on our side as we muddle through life trying to face it with Christ, and that's Thomas. So those are three phases of Thomas' faith. There is, however, another group of people that John refers to, those who cannot see, do not see, yet believe. Thomas heard, Thomas heard perhaps the concern in, in Jesus' His voice when he says to Thomas, you have come to believe because you have seen. What will I do with those people who will not see me like you do and still would want to believe? So Thomas says, I'll go. So he crosses the ocean to the place where there was a Jewish colony in the southern part of, of India. And there he led many Hindus and Jews to faith in Jesus Christ. And many of them believed without seeing, without touching, because Thomas took his faith to those people. So today, many millions of Christians call themselves St. Thomas Christians. So practical implication for today. Thomas was not there when the Lord appeared to the, of the, to the disciples. And as I said, he represents us before the Lord. He's with God, right? And who does he stand for? He stands for people like me. He stands for people like us. Someday, we too will stand face to face with God, and hopefully, we will make the same confession that Thomas did, my Lord and my God. On that day, really, on that day, it will not matter how we came to believe. It will only matter that we believe. 
the Eucharist is the closest we come to the experience that Thomas had on our faith journey. We come this morning and we stand face to face with Christ and we touch him and we hold him and we see him and we enter into communion with him. Like Thomas we say, my Lord and my God. Amen.